you trying to choose a college major? Maybe you're just starting to brainstorm what your future could look like. Or maybe you're torn between two passions and you can't decide. In this video, I'm gonna go over six tips you don't wanna miss when picking a college major, especially for those of you considering STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. This means this video will be the most useful for those of you hoping to pursue one of these fields or subfields, but most of the tips in this video could be helpful to students in any domain. Now, wherever you are in your journey in school, I'm sure you've heard you don't have to decide right now about a college major or even a career path. And that's true. Some colleges won't even let you declare a major until after your first year at the college or university. Other institutions can be a little bit more constraining. Some even ask you to pick a potential major on their application, or they require you to apply to a specific school during your college admissions process, for example, to a college of engineering within the university. You may even decide which colleges you want to apply to or you want to attend based on the major you're hoping to pursue. So. Yes, even though you don't have to decide this minute, or even if you're in college, you can always change your major. It's good to start thinking about which factors you need to consider before honing in on one or two or a minor. Okay, tip number one, know what's available to you. Most importantly, review the departments and programs available at your college or university or the potential colleges and universities that you hope to attend. You have to know which majors are even up for grabs or even a possibility before you pick one. So take a look at the different departments and programs they offer by browsing the undergraduate bulletin or the website for the college. There is a whole bunch to explore and I'm sure you'll find majors that you didn't even know existed once you start looking at all of the options. Tip number two, consider the setting. This is where you're going to need to do a little bit of digging and research. You want to find out the popularity of the major, meaning how many students graduate with that major at your college or university. You may want to look at the core available course sections per semester, what types of classes are offered when, research opportunities, and the types of professors that are there. These factors can make a huge difference in your experience with your major. So let's take a popular STEM major, biology. It's a crowd favorite among STEM students, especially those who are considering a path towards a medical field, but that means you'll find hundreds of other students in the same classes as you, not to mention in the same major as you. So picture these massive lecture halls where you're just one person in a sea of eager learners. And this can be exciting and for some students, but it does mean it's going to be harder to get one-on-one -on -one time with professors. You may be interacting more with teacher assistants or graduate students rather than the main professor. It could be harder to get recommendations for internships or grad programs or summer programs even. And it may be a little bit harder to build those one-on-one -on -one relationships with professors, which is important in your college experience. But popular majors do come with their fair share of benefits. There are usually more resources, more opportunities, and sometimes more seasoned professors who are just really good at teaching big groups of students. And as you get higher and higher in your courses, they'll become smaller and smaller. So the upper level courses, once you get past the general requirements or the weed out classes will be smaller and in a more intimate setting usually. You might have a wide range of study groups, tutoring options, resources available online, study guides. This can be a game changer for those harder initial courses that are typically weed out classes in larger universities. And again, these can classes can be taught by TAs, which can be great because they're passionate about the material and bring up that fresh perspective, are more relatable than some older professors can be, but they also have less experience teaching, and so you may not get the best learning experience from TAs as you would a real professor. But take the time to do the research and find out this information before you settle in on your major. All right, tip number three, when you pick a major, know that these are not the only classes that you'll be taking. You'll also have general education requirements, probably having to fulfill English and history electives, whatever requirements for graduation that your, your university has. But also, each major will have required courses in other disciplines. So for example, biology majors have to take some chemistry and some math and allied science electives, which could be something like anthropology. So if you're thinking of diving into computer science, but you really hate math, better check out the course requirements for her first and see how much math you're going to have to take along with the, your computer science major. Tip number four is to research career paths. Now, just like choosing a major early on in your high school career or early on in your college career isn't mandatory, picking what you want to do for a career is not something you have to do early on in life either. Plenty of people change careers every few years these days, but picking a major that better suits your career goals will set you up for success down the road. So take the time to research jobs that you could see yourself in and figure out what major requirements are listed for that job. You can do this on LinkedIn or Indeed or any other popular job site that, you, that you've heard of. 
usually the job requirements are listed in the initial job posting. This is also good to just make sure that the career path you're on is the one that you actually want. You may see yourself as a genetic counselor one day because you love biology and genetics and helping people, but when you do your research, you might find out that the average salary for a genetic counselor is not what you hoped it would be, nor are there as many job opportunities as you thought. I plan on making a whole other video about biology-related career paths, so stay tuned for that. And also, don't forget to think about grad school as well. A lot of jobs require grad school in addition to your undergraduate graduate major, so some majors can better set you up for success in grad school than others by just having certain prerequisites already a part of their major requirements by default or by having the type of classes that will be closely aligned to what you'll have to do in grad school, whatever path you choose. And keep in mind that Although some like super niche fields may sound really cool and exciting, it could limit your job options further down the road. So for example, neuroscience is something that is kind of super specialized. It's taking cognitive psychology and biology and putting it together to learn more about the brain. But there may be fewer job opportunities for a neuroscience major than there are for a broader biology major. But not saying you can't get jobs with a neuroscience major, but just something to think about. Okay, tip number five is to plan it out. Depending on how far along you are in your college career or your degree or even your college application process, you need to know how many courses you need to take for your major and how much time you have left to do that. If you switch your major or you decide too late that you wanna pursue chemistry when you've only been taking math courses, you may have to stay longer at college or overload your courses to fulfill your degree requirements. And depending on where you are, that can be pricey. And of course, changing your major is totally doable. It's just all about planning. So if you switch too late and you haven't taken any courses or many courses in the new major, you always wanna seek guidance from your academic advisors or your college counselors to make sure that you're not giving yourself too big of a challenge. There's always grad school if you don't end up getting the education you need for the major that you chose. Okay, my last tip for today is to pick something you actually enjoy. Don't choose a major just because you're friends are doing it or because it sounds good to you or because it's what your parents want you to major in. Also, you don't want to stay in a major because you thought you'd enjoy it at one time, but then you don't actually in when you get there and start taking the classes. When I started college, I thought I would major in English while minoring in a STEM field and soak up as many French classes as I could. But when I got to college, college level English courses were not my favorite. And after a few classes, I knew biology was the major for me. And of course, I still got my French minor. Biology challenged me, it got me interested, and I was learning so much about a field that I already was passionate about. So find that match for you pick a major that genuinely excites you, challenges you, but is also not going to take every single second of your time and your mental health and your sanity. Because after all, college is about finding your interests and passions and having an enjoyable time along the way. To everyone who is interested in pursuing a STEM major, I hope this video has been helpful for you. And to all the other majors out there, I wish you luck as well. Remember, take your time, do your research, and follow your interests. Let me know if you have any other questions about picking a major in college. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.